An echo of an echo is the semblance of a sound And I've pressed and I've waited with my ear upon the ground Oh lover, I'll see you there Waiting in the willows with your autumn hair Oh lover, I'll see you there After many miles We're going to go visit several farms and meet some farmers and makers and get some holiday shopping ideas. Come on, girls! The alpaca industry is here to stay. It's hypoallergenic. It's sustainable. It's extraordinary how good they are for the planet. Our spirits, all 21 flavors, are produced right here in-house. We have a little something for everybody. We're really proud to be producing food for our neighbors and for our community. Thanks for supporting your local farmer. Hi, I'm Andrew Silsby, President and CEO of Kennebec Savings Bank and proud presenting sponsor of Maine Life, a show that's dedicated to telling positive stories about life right here in Maine. We're here at our newest location on Baxter Boulevard in Portland. Come on in and say hi. But until then, we hope you enjoy this episode of Maine Life. Hi everyone, welcome to Maine Life. We are so excited about this week's adventure. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle with Real Maine, the ag promotion brand for the Maine Department of Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry. We're going to go visit several farms and meet some farmers and makers and take an alpaca for a walk. I cannot wait. Let's go. It's going to be great. I was lucky enough as a child to go to the Common Ground Fair. Every year my mom took us. I was about eight or nine years old when the first alpaca showed up at the fairs. They were very new to our country then and uh, fell head over heels in love with their beauty and put it on my bucket list. I started traveling the country visiting alpaca farms, learning about it. And what I found was the clothing is unbelievable. Not very readily available, but very, very sustainable. And for me personally, that tied into my values of I love the outdoors, I love caring for the planet. So made the decision to try to build a farm, which we did. We built our own facility and started out with just three alpacas. Today we are going into our 20th year of raising alpacas. And of course, because of that, selling beautiful alpaca clothing. We grow about 400 pounds of alpaca here a year, which in itself is an, a tremendous amount of fiber. One alpaca is about three adult sweaters, to put it into context. We partner with other growers from all over the nation, big farms who contribute lots of fiber. And we in turn work with the partners that we have for production. These are some of the best artisans in the world in Peru and in the United States. And so we are able to, because of the quality of alpacas we grow here, participate in these programs and sell some of the finest alpaca in the world right here from Unity, Maine. Here we have the information about the alpacas here on our farm and in general. Um, they are a camelid, which is in the camel family. A lot of people think they're llamas, but this shows an alpaca versus a llama. The most obvious thing is the size difference, but also the quality of the fleece. The photos here are from our farm. And the awards that you see around the barn, we have uh, one in the show. We do show across the country. And these are some of the ribbons that they've won and talks about the quality of what we're raising here in terms of fiber and breeding stock. Come on, girls! Come on, girls! Come on, ladies! Everybody's gonna get some. Oh my goodness! We know them all by name. We, in fact, have birthed most of the ones that are here now. We're on fourth generation from our original herd. They're living the dream. This is alpaca spa. I mean, it doesn't get better than this if you're an alpaca. <laughs> this is Savannah. Can we talk about her eyelashes? Her I eyelashes. Mean, wow. There's no Maybelline involved. She has those naturally. <laughs> They so you can beautiful. see the variation in colors. Wow. They do come in 22 natural colors. We have the silver gray looking one in the middle. She is a one of a kind here on the farm. We did go buy her because we tried for years to breed to get that silver gray and couldn't. 
Black is the rarest of the alpaca colors. You are beautiful. And she is what we call true black. So if you part that fleece, the only color you're gonna find in there is black. So wow. we have a little bit of everybody. Wow. One of the things that we do offer here at the farm, and especially in the nice weather, is we get to walk an alpaca. And I thought maybe we have a boy named Ludacris that you might like to take for a walk. Can't wait to meet him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice to meet you. We have folks that come here as a part of their therapy. This is like my weekly come here. I have a stressful job. I come and sit and relax with these beautiful animals and it brings me, you know, comfort. We get to watch visitors come here and they're transformed when people who have autism come and are very relaxed and calm or people with Alzheimer's whose memories seem to come flowing back and you get to see the joy it brings people. There's no better job in the world. I mean, we have the best job. After you've taken your alpaca for a walk, this is a great opportunity. We'll go in the shop and we get to show you what we make with this beautiful fiber. He will come right in. And up here on the wall, this is Ludacris. <laughs> I love it. He has his very own line of yarn. I think the alpaca industry is really a role model for all localized to international organizations. We're impacting the lives of Peruvian women who often have lived very difficult lives with very low income and high labor. And today, we're helping some of these women now move to the States and become some of the top distributors in the world. The alpaca industry is here to stay. It's sustainable, it's hypoallergenic, they only eat 2% of their body weight. It's extraordinary how good they are for the planet. It's gonna take a while to get there, but it will replace many other fibers on the marketplace. And I think young people today, we have schools here every week. Every week. They're passionate about caring for the planet. And we have so many brilliant young students who already know what alpacas are. Adults come here and say, oh, look, llamas children of this generation know what an alpaca is. How cool is that? They're very mainstream now. And we are so proud to say that some of our earliest guests when we started today are alpaca farmers, alpaca veterinarians, alpaca designers that were here at this age who are grown up professionals. And so we're pioneers in this industry and so proud to be teaching kind of the way to do things the way we used to, but with a little more comfort. It's not itchy. Right. <laughs> and right. stylish. Thank you so much for coming and being a part of our little slice of heaven here in Maine. Uh, we are so excited to share our alpacas with anyone that visits, but certainly excited to let people know that it's a great place to come year round. And of course, you can buy all these beautiful products online at MainAlpacaExperience.com. Thank you for what you do. Thank Truly. you. It's, it's so nice it's to a wonderful you. main life. Isn't it? It is. <laughs> Cheers to that. That was so much fun. I'm officially obsessed with alpacas and I can't wait to wear my alpaca socks and mittens. Next up, we're going to Daybreak Growers Alliance right here in Unity and we're going to pick up a CSA farm box featuring real main member products. Lead the way. The building that we're standing in was a three-room schoolhouse, and today it is the home of Dairy Growers Alliance, where we receive foods from about 100 different main farms and food producers and market that through a variety of different ways. We're aggregating food, we're selecting it based on customer preferences, we're packaging it, we're putting on a truck, and we're delivering it to where those customers are located. So this work is important. It kind of has this sweet spot of crossover between being both a community service and good from a health and nutrition level to be able to make local foods more accessible to Mainers and also from an environmental perspective. And so that combination really drew me to the work. And then selfishly to be able to have access to good food myself because I love eating good food. <laughs> Really the most direct way that consumers can benefit is becoming a Farmbox member and that means that you get to choose exactly what you want 
from this whole range of main farmers and food producers where we gather all the food for you and the week before your delivery comes, you pick out online exactly the things that you want. And the next week it comes to that delivery location that you selected and whether that's a library or a brewery or a community center or a restaurant, we have a host of different great community partners in these locations where it's also an event in the same way that a farmer's market is that you're going to pick up your box and so are 20 people that live in your neighborhood. So it ends up being a really fun way to both be supporting a main owned women owned business as Daybreak is, um, be supporting all of the farms that we work with, get access to the freshest foods possible and have just choice over it and then this great celebratory experience going to pick up your box and seeing neighbors when you do so. You love your job, I can tell. I love what I do, yeah. <laughs> I do, yeah. yeah. So today you guys are getting your very own farm box and hopefully I picked out the ingredients right uh, from some of my favorite farms and food producers here in Maine, many of which are on the real Maine site and so viewers can go and check them out. <laughs> Surprise! Oh, this is fun. Oh, you yeah, got some boss pears from pears. the apple farm, but you got uh, cider you from got the apple farm, one. so there might be an exchange it's a great there. Place to visit too. It Yum. is, they've got a great farm store out that way in Fairfield. You got some state of Maine. Awesome. State of Maine. Cheese. Cotton yep. and cheddar. Oh, and I have the crooked ricotta. face, oh. cold smoke ricotta. And they just won. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Love them. And we didn't have their lemon fennel uh, in inventory yet, but she just won a global award for uh, that version of her, her ricotta. This is her classic smoked ricotta. Really good. Tofu, you've had this? Yeah? Yep. Awesome. And these are lion's mane mushrooms. So we distribute a number of different ones. These guys actually grow these mushrooms year round, just They're up beautiful. the road about five minutes from here. We're making a salad. Some lacinato oh, kale salad. from over at Village Side and Freedom. <laughs> Delicata and pie <laughs> pumpkin. <laughs> this is awesome, yum. A lot of these items are actually available year round. And so a lot of people think, oh, it's just harvest season. It's a short season here in Maine. But whether it's greens that are grown in greenhouses or it's main grain that distributes beautiful products ranging yeah, from you know them. their rolled oats to you got polenta super yummy for your savory winter meals to amy over in skowhegan with crooked face uh, a lot of these different producers eggs are year round cider most of the year a lot of these different items you can actually get year round eat a local diet year round here in maine that's supporting maine farms and food producers which is pretty exciting yeah well thank you for all that you're doing yeah that's absolutely so nice thank you so much you. for having me a great story. Thanks everyone for watching. Please consider becoming a Farmbox customer of Daybreak Growers Alliance. Or if you're not ready to join us, you can send a gift certificate this holiday season to a loved one or donate a farm box to a family in need that will get out to one of our hunger relief organization partners. Have a great day. Hey you. If you've driven by our Nissan location, you've probably have seen the construction site of our biggest project yet, the Berlin City Mega Ramp. He knows we're building a new dealership, not a mega ramp, right? I'm gonna get like three feet of air on this thing. I don't listen to him. I heard Nissan was having a construction sale anyway. Hey, I need a new car. Want to trade sandwiches? This is a sweet, sweet job. For over 153 years, Kennebec Savings Bank has been a community bank for everyone. Whether it's providing convenient account access, quick and easy loan process, or supporting the community, our goal is to create lasting relationships rooted in trust and respect. It's always been about integrity and doing what's right for the customer and our communities. I'm Andrew Silsby and I invite you to come into a Kennebec Savings Bank location and experience the difference. The Travis Mills Foundation Veterans Retreat Center was started because my wife and I wanted to give back. Central Maine Power has been a huge factor in our success, so I want to thank them and the whole team over there for all they've done to help support us and push us forward. Central Maine Power is proud to support the Travis Mills Foundation and all veterans across the state of Maine and our country. Without our veterans, we wouldn't be the country we are today, the state we are today, and probably not the company we are today. It's great to be able to do good for the communities we serve. Welcome to Maine Plastic Surgery. We have been around for close to four decades and become one of the largest growing aesthetic practices in the Northeast. 
We are led by Dr. Gardenier, who is a Harvard-trained plastic surgeon. On the spa side of our office, we have all types of services, from Botox to filler to lash extensions. We definitely pride ourselves on being a one-stop shop in the beauty industry. I myself am a patient care coordinator and I'm standing by waiting to assist you on your journey. We're here for you. Hey, how's it going? Hey, you. Thank you. Welcome to Levant, Maine. I'm John Kennerson from Truji Family Orchards. I want to welcome you to our Christmas tree fields. And uh, I have been here for over 25 years now. I moved across the street when I was in junior high and pretended to be interested in animals at the farm, but really it was the cute girls. And I ended up marrying one of the farmer's daughters and now I'm one of the owners. And I'm glad to have you out here today and I'm excited to show you all that we've got. It all started when my father-in-law, who was a merchant marine, was sailing and he'd be gone for like three months at a time. And he came home once and his one-year-old daughter didn't even recognize him. And he said, this is not how I wanna raise my family. So he looked for another career and one of the things he thought was a pick your own apple orchard it would be perfect. He could work with his family. And so they started that in the 90s. And they planted 12 acres of trees. They never had a farming background and all the trees died. And he said, I guess I'm not cut out to be a farmer. They tried again and in the mid 90s started selling their first apples and, and they worked hard over decades and now it is what we have now where we actually do have three generations working together, living off the farm and it's really wonderful. So I'm very grateful for their vision and that they stuck with it and uh, that we get to be able to do what we do. When you come, depends on what season you're in. We've tried to provide something for every season of the year. We begin the year with our baby goats and a goat cuddle. So you can come and cuddle the baby goats in the spring. Then we also have the ice cream stand and pizza that's all available all year round. But the next thing that we're, you're gonna have is strawberries. So in June, we've got fresh strawberries. And then you come back in August for blueberries and raspberries. We do a farm camp for elementary school kids in the summer where you can come and get your hands and feet dirty, learning how to do farming. And then of course in the fall, that's what we're known for with the apples and the pumpkins and the wagon rides. Uh, you can feed the goats. You can go through our famous corn maze, which has won national awards. And then we have Christmas trees in, in December. So we're in about 10 acres of Christmas trees. We started planting in 2011. Oh, wow. Uh, and some of those ones that we planted over there are, are pushing maybe 12 feet tall because a Christmas tree grows about a foot a year. So the ones we're looking at around us are between like eight and nine years old. That's kind of how long it usually takes from when we plant a tree to when it's ready to harvest. So do you have a big tag a tree day or how does that yeah, work? Yeah, so in early October when everyone's out picking apples and, and doing the fall thing, we open up for a weekend and people can come out and pick their tree out then. Yeah. And we just reserve it so they can come back and just cut it. And so I see some are decorated. Yeah, so those ones that are decorated are the ones that people have already reserved. Okay. And we encourage them to uh, decorate their trees. And you have a contest? We do. So we last few years, we have a contest, the best decorated tree is free. I love it. Okay, this is beautiful. Maine has a great history of agriculture. It's very small scale, it's very personable. You can actually know who your farmer is and Real Maine really helps connect the consumer with the farmers and understand where their food comes from and they keep it local and we're really proud to be a part of that, to be producing food for our neighbors and for our community and we would love for people to, you know, keep it local, stay with Real Maine and thanks for supporting your local farmer. I think we found it. Oh, look at that. There's the winner. Yeah, they went all out on this one. I love it. They did. The Grinch who stole the Christmas tree. They got it for free, right? Yeah, they did. <laughs> they, they, uh, they didn't steal it. They got it for free. They won the contest. Well, I'm so happy to know you're here. My in-laws uh, live in Bangor, so I'll certainly be uh, coming by and, and seeing you again. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having us. And from everyone here at Truji Family Orchards, happy holidays. Hi, I'm John Rennie. Happy holidays. I'm here at Rennie's in Portland, Maine, and I'm going to take you around and show you some ideas for gifts for your family and friends. So come on in. For starters, we're going to take a look at all our Carhartt hats and gloves and mittens and pants and sweatshirts. Probably the biggest assortment of Carhartt in the state of Maine. Looking good, John. <laughs> here at Rennie's, we love a Maine outdoor adventure, and we've got Smart Will socks. Stay warm. Great stocking stuffers. We've got 
beautiful, warm and cozy throws for the whole family. Ooh, yeah, it's cozy That's one. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> we've got lots of Christmas food and candy and all kinds of sweets. Also, we've got lots of Maine made treats that come right from the state of Maine. You are like the Maine Santa. You are the Maine Santa, everybody. <laughs> Ready's a Maine adventure. Well, after a fun-filled day, last but not least, our travels bring us here to Etna, Maine. We're going to Mossy Ledge Spirits to try some handcrafted cocktails and get some holiday shopping ideas. Sign me up. Let's Great. go. In Etna here, we are located about 20 minutes from Bangor. We're out in the country. When you come off the interstate, there's nothing but woods, but we're only three miles off of the interstate. When you find us, it's a small turn, doesn't really look like much, drive down in, it opens up. You come into the building and this is what you see. It's a warm and welcoming place. We're kind of a hidden gem out here. Our spirits, all 21 flavors, are produced right here in-house. We have a vodka that's made from corn, and we have four whiskeys, an apple brandy, two gins, two rums, nine cordials, as a little something for everybody. A long time ago, back in about 1990, I read a book called Foxfire, and the book talked about moonshining as a fine art. Took my great grandmother's pressure cooker, built it over into a still, and found a passion that I could never let go. And after a lot of years of welding, I uh, got to the point where I could build distillery equipment. And that was how I intended to raise enough money to be able to open my own distillery. So in helping 56 others open their distilleries, the dream that I had of owning a distillery became more relevant and it was, it was time. So this building was built specifically for the distillery and we've been open for five and a half years. Even when it come to building this building, everything was as local as it could be. We had an Aetna contractor that built this building. You know, we, we use local maple syrup from Exeter, a friend of mine I went to kindergarten with. You know, we have our grains that come from Mapleton. Our pizza dough comes from down in the Lewiston area. Anything that we can do that's local, even if it costs a little more, is definitely worth doing because we have a lot of people who support us and then we turn around and support them and, and anybody in the community. Today we're actually uh, gonna be preparing some more cider that comes right from Conan's Apple Orchard, which is just around the corner from us. We take around 1,200 gallons of cider from them a year, which is about 27,000 apples, and we turn it into an apple brandy that's barrel aged right here. And can we try, try some right now? Absolutely. Let's go. <laughs> so that's the apple brandy. It is at 80 proof. So when you take a sip of that, you're gonna to wanna to exhale. Get the alcohol vapors out of your lungs so that you breathe in just natural air. You'll see what I mean, trust me on that. After a long, hard day, you deserve this. And exhale hard. Good job. Delicious. Yeah. You taste the apple? It's so good. You smell the so apple. Good. You can so smell good. it. You can smell the apples that mm -hmm. they use in there. It's going to warm you up, right? I like it. All right. What's next? So this is a cran apple pie. So this has got the apple brandy, a little bit of our cinnamon uh, cordial in it, uh, apple juice, and then some cranberry juice. Nice fall drink. Well, handcrafted here in Etna, Maine, alongside some Fox Family delicious potato chips that we're munching on, also made in Maine. Thank you so much for having us and creating such a wonderful experience. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. And thank you for giving us some wonderful holiday gift ideas mm -hmm. as well and spending the afternoon with us. It's been a good day, my friend. It really has. Thank you for putting this itinerary together, everybody. We are promoting shopping local this holiday season, and you can also do so by following our travels and... And visiting realmain.com and building your own itinerary. Happy holidays, everybody. Nice Cheers. Cheers. Raise a glass. Thank you everybody for watching this episode of Main Life. To follow all of our amazing adventures, you can check out our Instagram, Main Life TV, or at Arano Valley, our Facebook page, Main Life Media. You can get all of our shows for free on YouTube and the New Center Main app. And become a Main Life member. Sign up by going to our website, mainlifemedia.com, for exclusive content, some great deals, and so much more. Happy adventuring, everybody. We'll see you next week. Well, that was so much fun. I cannot wait to come back. Everybody come to party with the Almagro. <laughs> well, that was so much fun. <laughs> well, that was so much fun. It really was, I'm not lying. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I was gonna say something like, well, I'll just stick to the daybreak. <laughs> okay.
Stan. <laughs> wow, you feel like a really high-end carpet. Yes. <laughs> you are so cute. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you are so sweet.